Hey, good day. I'm Stephen Schmidt. This is LD Station. We're about 56 k's northwest of Broken Hill, 30 k's northwest of Silverton. So you go out the Silverton Road past Dunbarmick and basically start heading north, and you'll find us on the side of the road. You can't miss us. Good morning again, Alan Johnson from Prana. This morning we got up nice and early, had a grouse breakfast, which was really nice, poached eggs and bacon and toast and orange juice and believe it or not, char lattes and cappuccinos. This is pretty upmarket, I've got to tell you. We run farm stays and full drive tours, accommodation for universities and anyone wants to camp or camper vans. Our accommodation it varies, it's equivalent to four and a half star, down to budget with bunk beds and we also have camping and caravan sites, powered, unpowered. We also have camping sites along our creeks. So people are able to help themselves to some wood to have fires at the right times of the year. We also have packages where you can have bed and breakfast only. And different lots of groups that come through. We're about 40,000 acres, sheep and cattle. But in the last few years we've gone into tourism. It's run solely, well mainly by Naomi, does all the paperwork and business side of it, and I do whatever else she wants me to do out here. Now with our four-wheel drive tag-along tours, we're also getting people who have that interest there to challenge themselves a little bit to go into the hills, but be safely guided by Stephen, who's lived here all of his life. You go through the barrier ranges and you're going through sand and some very rugged places through the hills. You get some magnificent views. You can take great photos and shots of your friends doing all the driving as well. Show them around some of the history, the old Money Money Ruins, the homestead, some of the buildings and that around here. It usually starts out here about 10 o'clock in the morning. You go up into the hills. Some of the driving's easy, some's a little bit more difficult, so it's not the typical off-road driving. So after a great breakfast, we went out and we did some driving around. Well this morning's trip has really been in stark contrast to what we saw yesterday. Yesterday we were up in the barrier ranges doing some pretty gnarly steep tracks and this morning we've been out having a play on the Mundy Mundy Plains which are absolutely spectacular. They're as flat as a pancake for as far as the eye can see. Again, there's an awful lot of history in this area. We've been looking at some old ruins. And we went to the old Shearer's Quarters. Surprisingly a really big building. Apparently a sheep came from miles and miles around to be shown here at this property in the 1800s and the early 1900s. It was quite a large building, quite a large structure still there. The showers, Shearer's Quarters. Surprisingly a huge area of slate. When I asked Steve what that was for, he said that was actually the bailing room where they'd store all the wool bales after they'd shorn the sheep. So really interesting stuff. Also the beauty of today is we've, you know, we've been again out to more ruins again, the old shearing sheds. And after the heavy floods they've had out here recently, there are quite a lot of relics exposed on the ground where the water had run and washed the dirt off them. And found old wide combs and narrow combs and all those sorts of things. We've picked up a few of those trinkets to put in the boxes of here at LD Station. This place has got so much history, it's amazing. Now we found a creek there to go and have a look at. We found some more ruins again, an old wool shed, we found some tanks, a whole heap of stuff.
and then to see again where the floods have been down through the riverbeds and see some of the big old white ghost gums that have just been here for hundreds and hundreds of years and as we always say is if only the walls could talk you can imagine if the trees could talk and what they would see if they could tell us what was going on hundreds of years ago. Now the thing I really love about this area is not just the diversity in the terrain, but it's the history of the area. There is so much to do and see out here, it's really well worth coming out and spending a few days out here. Take the Daydream Mine for example, that was one of the first mines in the Broken Hill area and it really is a fascinating insight into the hardships these guys went through back in the sort of 18th century. The Daydream Mine is one of the few mines in the area that you can still go down and it's really worth doing just to gain some sort of understanding as to what their early settlers had to go through out here. After that we found a creek bed to play on where Danny yet again showed us what his new suspension could do on a mini outback challenge wall type climb with a bit of digging with a few guys with shovels and things. Even outback Matt and the rest of the guys had a crack at the wall, it was great fun. This has been a great exercise in approach and departure angles. Four wheel drives obviously come in all shapes and sizes and it's very important that you buy one that really does have a good approach angle and a good departure angle. And as you can see with these vehicles, in a lot of cases the accessories you fit to them, providing you're buying good quality accessories, will actually greatly improve these angles as well. The old 60 series did it as well and did surprisingly well, so we had a really, really good day there. We're just heading back now to the homestead for lunch and looking forward to a fun afternoon again in wonderful Broken Hill and Elby Station. We've got plenty of different opportunities. We've got flat open country, just sandy country and creeks. We'll take up some of the creeks. People just like to have a play and go up and down creeks and run around. And the stonier country, which is hilly, a lot of broken stones and rocks and shale. A few water holes, just different country we've got up there. Natural water springs that just flow all the time. But it's not real hard. You'll see I'll be just running around a little standard Navarro ute. That's all I'll be running, so it's not too hard. Anyone can really do it, whatever they want to do. So you don't have to have nothing too flash to come out here and flog around. You don't want to wreck them too much if they come out here and they want to go to Birdsville for a day trip. Well, they don't want to wreck the car on the first day out of town, so instead of staying in town, they can come out for a bit further. Makes it a bit easier, I suppose. It's like a day and a half trip from Sydney, day trip from Melbourne. It's like 1,200 k's from Sydney, about 850 from Melbourne, I think it is. You've got standard scenery everywhere in Australia. You've got kangaroos, emus, all the standard galahs. We've got a me and galahs. If you get up here early in the morning, me and galahs out here to listen to. Bird life, there's plenty of bird life floating around here at the moment. Because we get a lot of bird life when lake air gets full, when it starts to dry up, we get a lot of weird and wonderful birds that fly back east, heading back from more lakes over on the coast. You've got a different variety of things out here, like the colours and sunsets. We get a lot of people come out and sit up in the hills for the sunsets. We can find out information on us. We've got a web page, just ldstation.com, and that's where we've got the links to all the history and everything there. You can click on that and that'll come to our booking site and get through to there and send us an email and that's the easiest way to get through to us. Through the email, there's phone numbers and other things there if you want.